well, what to say, what to say, indeed. I, I'm going to go see Solo today. I'm going to check it out. If it's worth a damn, I'll tell you. If it's not, um, you know, I, uh, from what I've read and seen and all the reviews I've been going over for the last couple of days, it's definitely your typical big Hollywood blockbuster, nothing special about it. So I'm going to go see that for myself. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do the review. And this is sort of a pre-video of what I was uh, planning to do later on. And it looks like, I don't know if it's, uh, I hope I get to see two, three movies today after. I'm going to try to get there as early as possible, get my ticket, go into the theater, and then just bounce around theaters and watch other movies and then go see uh, uh, Solo. So hopefully it'll be a really good day. I'm going to do a little vlog of the whole thing and post it up and nobody's going to watch it. But that's what I'm planning. And uh, well, I think it's going to bomb. I don't think so. I think people are going to have a, lot, a little like, like event situations where they're going to take their kids to this. They're going to take the family. And uh, if that's what it functions as, a good little party movie for everybody to just go. But, you know, I'll, de I'll determine whether it's really bad and not going to be a long-standing film with legs or not. And we'll finally know. And, uh, of course, my biggest gripe with the film is that the original directors... I contacted them about wanting to play Lando for them and they ignored me and went with Glover and all that and apparently Glover did a good job so if he did a good job and he actually convinces me as a super Star Wars fan Super Nintendo Star Wars fan that he is definitely the person to play uh, Lando versus someone who looks like Lando uh, then congratulations but if I watch it, and some reviews actually say, well, he's not really that great. And he's just putting on an act, and he's, you know, superficial. So, I can't wait to check it out myself and get it over with. I'm going to be down there in Manhattan. I'm in the Bronx. This is where I live. And so, it's a long trip, about an hour to get down to Manhattan. So, I should be there about 4 or 5 o'clock hopefully be able to bounce around movies before I go see Solo and then I'll be right back so check me out stay tuned this is Avenue. on the train on my way got a 40 some odd minute trip all the way down to uh, 72nd Street I'm gonna go to Lowe's Theater the uh, so solo movie I'm about to see it this is before the I guess the storm it's calm before the storm nice weather today good looking girls walking around half naked which is the point of today so thank you ladies for the show creatures to designing ships and building worlds and props and assembling droids and amazing wardrobe and hundreds of incredibly talented individuals who came together to bring this galaxy far far away to life so i just want to say thank you for joining us on this thrilling ride across the stars uh and on behalf of all the cast and crew of solo a star wars story now i'll ask you enjoy the show Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Around the dice. I want 
back home. Initial thoughts on the film. Definitely could have been better. But it wasn't it wasn't completely disjointed. It did feel like something was off. I can tell you that. But we'll get into it later. Well, what else can I say? That's it. I have now seen Solo. I've been waiting plenty of time, plenty of time now, months, months, and months. I've seen Solo. I was overlooked to play Lando Calrissian, so that Donald Glover, when he auditioned, got the role and. My real intention of going tonight to go see the movie was to see what Donald did with the role. Out of everything, I have to say that his performance as Lando probably is the least of the film's problems. Um, but he could have done better than that. That was doesn't nothing. It was just a light impression of Billy D with no depth to the character, no nuance, no nothing. He was just okay. As for the film, it's not bad. It's uh, People are like losing their balls over it. I've seen a similar film before. It was called Dungeons and Dragons. Exact same light-hearted adventure kind of thing. And of course, if you've ever been watching uh, any kind of, you know, galaxy hopping, gangster kind of movie, uh, Fifth Element. It's a lot like the Fifth Element. Uh, Guardians of Galaxies brought up. Any of these weird Han Solo-ish movies would crop up. And of course, the review I liked the most was the one that mentioned that uh, uh, what's his name, Chris Pine played as plays a better Han Solo than Aldridge. Yeah, if if they if they we don't. The thing about this movie is we do not ever in the film get close to Harrison's portrayal. Not once. This Han Solo is an alternate universe version with his own interesting quirks and it maybe it would have been it would have been actually more a smarter move to just make this about a different character. I agree with that. It's not about the Han Solo character, it's about someone else. And that, that would have been fun to see them go down a road of maybe exploring a different character. You know, uh, we learn nothing particularly new, and the movie ends on a cameo appearance by a prequel character. I don't know why they made so much of a hoopla about all of the OT characters return in this. I didn't see any OT character return in this movie. Um, there's no mention or any connection to the holiday special. I would have thought that would have been the thing to kind of bring up. Life Day and, you know, the dancing hologram things and Chewbacca's family. Everybody says this is Chewie's movie, but it's not. I don't, there's no Chewie focus at all in the film. It's about, it's square jawed about Han Solo from start to finish. It's his story. And Chewie is there. He he could have easily been not there. You know, it's just a chance meeting that they brought them together, and because they're supposed to be together, he's together. There's no Chewie has no reason to stay with Han. Their bond is never really focused on, or why they're together. So it's just like they're together because they're together in the next few sagas of the you know story. And um. I don't know. I mean, it's like it's like a lot of spin-off movies or something. You know, when you watch the spin-off of uh I guess uh you know, any cartoon or something like that. Uh I can't remember what they what kind of spin-offs I've seen. 
Like it's like She Ra or something like that. You got the He Man stuff, and you love He Man, and then they go and they make a She Ra movie, and you're like, it's okay. I'd compare this movie to Conan uh, the Destroyer. It's like you have Conan the Barbarian, and that's great, and then you have Conan the Destroyer, which is more light and fun and has its own style to it, and it's interesting. It's an interesting film, Conan the Destroyer. So that's what you're going to get with this. Uh, I wouldn't pay to see it. I paid $30 so that I could get the, uh, the little memorabilia that you get, the poster and things like that. Uh, but it's like, no, no. I do not. The thing that there was a, there's a good movie inside of this movie. There is the Lord and Miller movie inside of this movie, and that's the thing that really I think a lot of people enjoyed in the, as they watched it. The parts that were left in the movie by Lord and Miller, the Ron Howard parts were the ones that were just like, "What are we doing here?" You know, it's like this is so boring and just held back, and that's the problem with the movie. It's held back. The Lord and Miller movie was a party. He was when they were making this movie. I'm pretty sure their intention was to make it a farce. This is going to be spaceballs, and that's what this movie isn't. This movie's trying to be spaceballs, and then it just kind of it, it it gets too scared to be spaceballs and just I'm Star Wars. Please love me. You know, so it would have been hilarious if Darth Maul did show up. And this was having that space balls tone to it. So that's what's really the part that what the hell were they thinking? You know, this would have been freaking hilarious a film if it was just jokes being tossed around constantly and winks at the camera, breaking the fourth wall, all kinds of little things they could have done to kind of liven it up. It's a it's a it's a it's a limp. You know, the movie's limp and they, there's no life to it. But it's not like you can't enjoy it. You will, you know, it's like freaking any kind of, uh, you know, average, normal uh, adventure movie you'd find. My, my thing is to point at uh, Wild Wild West. You know, when I went to see that movie as a kid, I loved it. It was fun. You know. It got freaking bashed to hell by people. I was unaware of that. I just had a good flump. I just had a good time. That's a pretty good movie to me. And I guess I guess you can point to the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. You know, I guess Disney's trying to Pirates of the Caribbean's Han Solo's character and turn him into Pirates of the Caribbean. The biggest problem with that is that Pirates of the Caribbean has. This is like this is a, this movie says if Pirates of the Caribbean was made. Boy, Orlando Bloom was a star, and there was no Jack Sparrow. Would you want to see more of that? No, you know, so I'm like, the movie ends with Han Solo and Chewie and the Falcon, and we're about to go on an adventure job with the Hut, and I'm like, I don't want to see it. I, I'm good, you know, so that's enough. That's enough. I, I'm, I got it. I got it. You, you, you set everything up. It's ready to be. Okay. <laughs> It, 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 it's it's just it exists similar to Rogue One I have no intention of watching Rogue One again but I did like it I enjoyed it it was fun it's fun to have to see Darth Vader again it's fun to have that big ass Star Wars kids playing with toys kind of thing at the end but ultimately it's a movie that has no meat it's just shallow superficial blow crap up and then it's over, the characters kind of suck. And yeah, you know, that's the joke about this movie. It's not like Rogue One. You actually do develop an interest in Han Solo and the girl and their story. And the drama there is really good. You want to know what's going to happen next for them. And then the movie just doesn't bother with it. You don't know. The and Finesse character. Wow. Wasted opportunity. That could have been... I know I don't know what the hell that was about. It kind of that's the part of the film that's the most ridiculous, out of nowhere part. Suddenly, Emphy Nest is not the bad guy, although Emphy Nest 
is the one that killed all of her, all of their friends. Uh, that, that makes no sense. But, okay, so they're fighting over the fuel stuff. And why does Enfy Nest have superpowers at one point in the movie? And then now it's a regular human being at the other part of the movie. That's real, like... And Dryden Voss's character is just meaningless. And that's probably the, like, what are we doing with that? Is he an alien? What is he? Why does he look normal with most, I don't know. And it's just a, it's a movie Ron Howard had no control over. And that's the, that's the real problem with it. There's no control. No control. The movie's just kind of being it's a it's a ragdoll movie it's a ragdolling there's no steady hand keeping the movie going and making sense ron howard's just ragdolling through trying to get to the ending you know and it's 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 i think uh it's very uh uh it's like it's 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 almost a coincidental thing that you know it's very poignant I should say that the Falcon is a tattered wreck at the end of their journey through the Kessel Run. That's exactly how this movie feels when it ends. It's a tattered wreck. It's just everything's broken and falling apart, and I don't know why you went through all of that and. It doesn't stick the landing. That's what my immediate thought after I saw it. It does not stick the landing. It completely crumbles to pieces at the ending. There's no epic battle at the end. It's just walk over to the guy and shoot him. That's the ending of this movie. And you'll know it when you see it. I should have probably provided a spoiler warning for that, but that's it. It it has an underwhelming, anticlimactic ending. And Lando, and none of the fault, there's a lot of flaws. If you think about this movie for more than five minutes, you're going to find a lot of flaws. One of the biggest ones for me is Lando and Han. Why the hell? What the... Why are they friends? There's no, there's no reason under the blue sun... For these two people to be friends. So for Han to have this idea in his head. In Empire Strikes Back. That he can hang out with Lando and nothing's going to happen. Makes zero sense now. That part is completely undercut by this whole film. And that just blows my mind. They could have had the two kind of talking to each other for a while. And saying, you know, we... We're from the same hood. We're buddies. There's no scene like that. There's a little scene where they have a chat. But there's no point where these two actually develop a close, really super close friendship with each other. Nothing. And similar with Chewie. They just meet. And then they're like, yeah, we're friends now. But at no point do you feel like they're inseparable. And in fact, and there's a part where in the movie where they just say, Han tells Chewie, you know, good luck to you, buddy. Hope we meet again someday. Bye. That's just, what? The, really? That's not how it works with them? No. <laughs> how did they? And then Chewie's just, at the end of the movie, Chewie's with Beckett. And he's just hanging out with Beckett, the evil guy. Why is he with him and hanging out with him? And, I, you don't think about this movie, man. Enjoy the spectacle. It is a ride. It's dumb fun. That's all you can ca classify it as. Dumb fun. And that's it. It's... I was... You know, the reviews prepared me for just... Don't take it serious. And... You know, it's like an SNL... It's like a Mad TV sketch. You ever watch a sketch? It's just a sketch. It's a Han Solo SNL sketch. And it's... It's, it, it is what it is, it exists, and it has no bearing on anything, and you don't worry about it. I don't know if they're going to do any spin-offs with these characters, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know what the hell 
is going to happen now. We're in a very murky period. We don't know if the movie's going to do huge or kind of fall to another. Will it do well? People are stupid. We've made Transformers, the franchise, a billion dollar freaking money maker. So this movie is a big dumb action movie and those pretty much you know are, are guaranteed to do very well so it'll be all right i'm just it's not going to uh matter this storyline that they wrote this movie it's not going to matter uh we're not going to be we're not going to be begging for them to bring back alden and glover and nothing they did in this film solidified them as the characters we could have another Han Solo movie in the future and completely recast everyone and no one will care but yeah no one's gonna want more of this um, we're gonna want the Obi-Wan movie we're gonna want the Boba Fett movie this is a good like uh, practice run for the, the, the other ones this is what this is it's like okay let's kinda feel out the world of Star Wars in different ways and then we're gonna go into branching out because I loved the battle with Enfi Ness. That was fantastic. And I reveal Enfi Ness as this being this this bitch. And they're like, well, that's kind of that that's the movie. It's badass and cool and all this shit and then <laughs> I'm a little woman. And it's like that's the movie. <laughs> So there you have it. I mean, go go for it, man. If you want to have a party, take take the kids on a birthday party to a Star Wars thing. I don't know if this is going to do it for them. Probably something else. But it's not the end of the world. It's okay. It's a little flick or something. That's all I got to say. Stay classy, Cloud City. The real Lando Calrissian has spoken. Solo is oh somewhat okay it's a good it's a, it's a good little flick yeah also um yeah the movie just should not have brought back freaking stupid Dumb. You'll know. You'll know. That's it.